Welcome to the SelfGrowth.com show. Uh, my name is David Ricklin, and very excited today. I'm the founder of SelfGrowth.com. With all of the challenges going on in the world and in business, we've been hearing more about the importance of leadership. To help us understand how to become a better leader, we're discussing a concept called leadership presence. To help us understand this topic, I'm excited to interview Diane Craig. Make sure to listen closely. We're going to be sharing a lot of information today. Before we get started, I just want to take a couple of minutes and share some information about Diane Craig. Recognized internationally for her executive and leadership presence training system, Diane facilitates customized training, private coaching, workshops, and seminars to multinational businesses and Fortune 500 companies around the world. From Europe to the Gulf region, Asia, Australia, South Africa, and across the Americas, North, Central, and South, the nucleus of her training philosophy is to align and leverage academic and technical expertise with personal potential. From C-suite and senior executives to new professionals, Diane has helped elevate the success of some of the most influential people in the world. Diane is a member of the Women's President Organization and the International Coaching Federation. The WPO is a membership organization for women's presidents, CEOs, and managing directors of privately held multi-million dollar companies. She's a regular speaker at national and international business meetings and conferences. And I just want to give out her website so you can see exactly what she's doing. Please jot this down. It's corporate classic, uh, corporateclassinc.com. So it's www.corporateclassinc.com. All right, Diane, welcome to our show. Thank you. Thank you, David. Pleasure to be here. All right. Sounds good. I want to jump right in. It's an interesting and important topic. So how do you define, we're talking about leadership presence. How do you define leadership presence? Yeah. So it's a, it's a, these are words that people struggle with and really it's your ability to connect like authentically, you know, you, you want to show up as who you are and as the best you are. Mm -hmm. Build yep. confidence in others. And in order to do that, we need to have confidence in ourselves as well. And be able to inspire and motivate people into action. So I always say that inspiring is the pull and motivating is the push. Because sometimes, you know, we inspire people and people leave and they say, yes, we're doing this. The goal sounds great. But then they lose the motivation, right? right? And then you need to be as a uh, need to be able to motivate your people into action as a leader. So that's why we define it saying that it's the ability to connect authentically, build confidence in others, and inspire and motivate people into action. Yeah, it's interesting. There's a couple of things that I really want to focus on what you said because I haven't heard this before. The inspire and motivate as the kind of the the push and the pull. Uh huh. Uh, uh, I like that. I like that concept a lot because I think both are important. You want to inspire people initially, but then you need to keep them motivated. So I like that concept. And, and one of the things what I think we're seeing a lot in the world, unfortunately, is lack of authenticity. Mm, so yeah. being authentic is becoming more and more critical. And, I, and tell me if you, if you see it differently, but I, I think people have a sense when you're not being authentic. Absolutely. And, you know, I remember uh, one of our large uh, multi-billion dollar organization, you know, client, like a client that we, we do business with like internationally, like they, they, I remember meeting with HR and they said, oh, does that mean that everybody's going to walk the same, sound the same? And I said, no, it's about being authentic, you know, because if you try to be somebody else, number one, it's difficult to try and be somebody else. And the other thing you have to remember is that people are not fools. So if you're not authentic, if you um, try to be somebody you're not, people pick up on that immediately. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when it comes to uh, your leadership presence, it's basically how you show up, how people experience you. And, and it's important for, as a leader that you show up intentionally, you know, like really thinking about before mm -hmm. I have this difficult conversation, before I enter into this meeting, what are my intentions? What, what do I want to get at the end of this? And what kind of behaviors will that require from me? So that's kind of, you sure. know, uh, yeah. That makes total sense. Now, 
people clearly are more interested. People are talking about leadership because it's important. So what are you finding? What are the motivating factors of your clients who want to in increase their presence and, and specifically their leadership presence? Well, I'm going to say, share some motivating factors with you that, in fact, they're not, you know, like our motivating factors. Um, you know, we want people to to reach, you know, the the to be at their best, uh, to reach the next level that they they want to get to, the, to grow uh, their potential. But what we're hearing with people from our clients, and they say, when they say, "Well, here's the reason why." I want to have this leadership presence is because I I want to connect authentically. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't want to have to be somebody else in order to connect with somebody. How can I can do this and really um, be at my best? And yes, I I do want to build confidence in my people. I want I want them to know that I have their back, that I, I'm there to lead, to mentor and to really uh, inspire them in, in what they do day in and day out. Uh, and, and, and let them know that they can do what uh, they're supposed to do and have the confidence to meet with clients, to uh, share new ideas without fear of retribution. Mm -hmm. I just want to build that confidence and that psychological safety around my team. Um, another thing that we hear is they say like, you know, I want people to trust me, to, to, right. to respect me, to like me, you know, in the imitation game, uh, in the movie, um, you know, this uh, scientist says to the other scientists, she says, look it, if uh, they don't like you, they're not going to help you. And very often people so focus on their, their credibility and when we, we know that in fact, your likability factor trumps it. If I like you, mm -hmm. you know, it'll be a lot easier for me to trust you. Right. And then, you know, uh, David, people have trouble communica communicating effectively. Like I, I've seen so many leaders, like we do these 360, meaning that, you know, they do an assessment and other people do the same assessment. Mm -hmm. And we say, this is what people think about you. And this is what you think about yourself. And they say, you're not a visionary. You, you're not a leader with a vision. And he said, well, no, absolutely. I have a vision. You need to be able to communicate that vision. So sometimes, you know, uh, maybe we, we, we have that vision in, in, in our head. We know where we're going, but we're not sharing it. And it needs to be shared on a consistent basis. So people are reminded why they are doing what they are doing. Um, and of course, you know, if I have a better leadership presence, it's going to elevate my status. Um, I'm going to increase my awareness of uh, the awareness of self and others. You know, our emotional intelligence is so critical. Uh, I want to win client. I want to network with confidence. I want to give myself permission to, to contact some people that maybe I wouldn't be able to or think or have the confidence to to contact and of course there's our reputation you know i say your reputation never goes on vacation and if you don't manage it yourself other people will manage it for you so um so we help you um you know and that is one of the things that we help our clients with is like how do i enhance my reputation how can i create sound bites about myself and then you know and then of course uh, and david you know all about this is um how you set your goals, right? And each goal needs to have a strategy and each strategy needs to have some actions uh, attached to it. So these are the reason why that, you know, like people say, well, I want, I want to reach my goals more quickly. How can I do that? So these are the motivating factor for most people because many of them, you know, um, are kind of, you know, sort of, of um, staying at one level and they would really like to reach the next level and, mm -hmm. and think about what do I need? Um, how can I get this? And is it possible for me to get it? And in fact, you know, if you commit to this, it's not, we're not changing your character. 
and uh, this is these are just skills that adds to your strengths that you have already that makes a lot of sense there are a few things that jump out at me in terms of what you were saying that the first one is this likability and or trust trustability the like and trust and what's interesting is people lose sight of how important it is to be liked and trusted these are really critical things you know, we've been in a world where some people look to certain leaders who lead out of fear, you know, totally yeah. from a kind of fear base. And I think one of the people that people in the world have looked up to is Steve Jobs, who kind of I, the general what you hear about him. I never had any contact directly. Is he someone who, who kind of led out of fear, you know, and kept people on edge all the time. But in, in the real world, for the vast majority of people, it's not an effective approach and leading from a, a trust or where people know, like, and trust you is a better, a much more effective technique. What, is that something that you've found as you're working yeah. in a lot of companies? Yeah, absolutely. And we see it then and day out because here's what happened. You know, like, the, like and even uh, Dr. Lieberman, who's the, one of the co-founders of the Neuro Leadership Institute, you know, um, says that you know they've done some research and they say we have like you know leaders that achieve results that um you know they drive for results and this is what they want and this is how they get to the next level they they they, they achieve results but great leaders not only do they achieve the results drive results they also have very high interpersonal social skills right. and and as a matter of fact um when they did the research they showed that do you know how many great leaders we have that have both drive results and have inter high interpersonal uh, social skills it's less than one percent actually point seventy seven percent and uh, and for the uh, for our audience here, our listeners, they can go to TED Talk, Dr. Uh, Lieberman of the Neuro Leadership Institute, and uh, they can listen to his TED Talk, and he shares those those stats as well. So you know, and and that's the reason you know um, why you know sometimes we have you know that bull in the china shop that we refer to sometimes you know yeah. divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. Right. Doesn't matter how many precious vases we break as we go through the, that shop. So these are the people we do business with, you know, and eventually it catches up to you right. because these are the people that get to a very senior level because they got the results, but now they're stuck because they do not have the interpersonal skills that they need in order mm -hmm. to build a relationship and, and, and have these wonderful uh, connections with stakeholders, uh, with uh, with employees and clients. So, mm -hmm. so likability is is big. Right. Now, one of the things I want to mention to everybody is you've also created an online program for people to help them develop leadership presence, and we're going to get into that in a little bit. But uh, my understanding is you're going to be offering a free trial for that for anybody listening today. Yes. And what I'd like to do is give out the website so people can jot it down now if they want to go check it out later and try a free trial to see exactly what Leadership Presence is about, see if it's a good fit for them. And you want to, let's give out the, the website. I'm going to just give it out for everybody. Uh, it's elearning.corporateclassinc.com. So elearning.corporateclassinc.com forward slash offer. And when, is that the correct? Just want to make sure. Is that the correct link? Yes. Just, okay. So go to that link. You'll see free trial. You can do it later. We're going to get a little bit more into it as we're talking here. But I wanted to give that link out to everybody. I absolutely recommend for anybody that's in a position, if you're in a leadership position currently, you're looking to be in a leadership position, leadership presence is, is clearly an important thing to develop for yourself. Uh, so make sure you check it out. Take a look at, at what Diane's created over here. But uh, there's a few other things I, I want to delve into with you uh, while I have you here. I know you've been doing this a long time. So one of the things that I, I know, is specifically people who have been working for a while and have education, uh, they might have an MBA, they might have a PhD, they think, all right, I know everything. 
Uh, and I'm sure you're often asked, why would I want to receive training or coaching and presence when I have these degrees? I've been doing this for 20, yeah, or I have 20 years of man. I've been a manager for 20 years. I have my MBA, a PhD, whatever it is. Why do I need this? How, what's your answer? How do you respond to, to people who are saying that? Well, you know, uh, one thing that is very well known, um, especially as you uh, go up in the ranks, is that we hire for technical and we fire for behavioral. And, and that is even more so at the senior level. So when you start, you know, like, I mean, you need, so maybe, you know, the uh, mandatory requirement is that you had an MBA, that you had a PhD, that mm -hmm. you, you know, had a university degree. That's the, your price of entry, you know? But after that, you've got to demonstrate so many other skills. And even we have like um, clients in IT and uh, you know, like we have these we these whiz and these people that know about programming and computing and you know, or there's a video gaming business and right. they're, they're, you know, uh, exceptional, exceptionally bright young people. And then what happens is so bright and the, the, these companies grow really quickly. And then what happens, boom, I'm from programmer to now the manager of 10 programmers, right? right and, right. Uh, but now I realize that I'm not doing so much programming anymore. I'm handling uh, conflict. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I'm motivating people. I'm inspiring people. I'm, uh, you know, making sure that everybody gets along, that, uh, that my team is productive. How do I make them more effective? So these are very different skills that within sometimes like even just two years within the time, from the time you, you started in a job that you find yourself in, in a position that um, you, know, you don't have those skills. And, you know, David, one of the reasons that I wanted to, uh, our company to launch this online, very robust leadership presence training is that our our training is um you know the cost is is um is prohibitive for for some and and what happens in large companies we know that unless you're at a certain level they may not invest as much as in in your training so mm -hmm. uh, and we've been asked by our clients like how can we scale this training and this online program was launched with uh, the hope that we could help people just as well uh, through this self-paced program. Mm -hmm. And and we also give the opportunity for some who, you know, decide, well, I'm taking this uh, program online self-paced, but boy, I would like a little bit of coaching. So there is some coaching available that you can buy in some packages. And, um, and, I, and I think, you know, like, I'm very proud of this. I'm very excited about it because... I feel that our training is not been was not available to everyone, and now it is. All right, that's good to know. And we gave out the URL. We'll we'll get a little bit more into it in a, a few minutes. Can you give us an example? We're talking about leadership presence of someone with leadership presence with leadership presence and without it. What what does that really look like? Yeah, so you know, I uh, I was on a board of an organization, and we needed to our new CEO. And I remember the, the first woman who came, um, you know, like we had five applicants and mm -hmm. there's a chairman of the board, like chairperson of the board, I should say. And then 10 of us basically around the boardroom table, we all have a question as the, the people. And it's a, you know, and it's a, it's a difficult job interview. And uh, this woman came in and she had like this amazing resume. And, uh, but you know, when she came in, David, like, her body language said something, I am not confident. I'm not, not sure I can do this job. Um, I probably shouldn't be here. You know, like right. her demeanor, her behavior, like her, her body was hunched over, her mm -hmm. smile was very shy. Um, the handshake was not very strong. The eye contact was uh, barely, um, you know, she barely could make eye contact with us. So immediately, you know, that leadership presence that we want and we needed, we wanted and needed wasn't there. 
And then it didn't matter about all the qualifications because we thought like, okay, we've got all the content, but we need content plus. Mm -hmm. um, so that was somebody with um, not, without leadership presence. And then there, there, there was another person who came in who looked the part, mm -hmm. you know, that nice expensive suit and the French cuff shirts and the cufflinks and without 10 minutes, it was obvious that the person had no content. So we don't want that either. You know, your suit is not a substitute for your credentials. We need right. to understand that. Then there's a third person who comes in and uh, this person, you know, the likability factor was just not there. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, you know, so that person, right. nobody could relate to, she was mm -hmm. a bit, um, you know, like just a, a bit not assertive. It was, it seemed a little bit more aggressive. So, and then the fourth person comes in and is a man, you know, like, and you know, when we talk about confidence, I always refer to humble confidence, not arrogant confidence. Right. So this person has everything that we need. And, uh, and you know, that confidence, like the content, the likability factor, uh, credibility, everything was there. And, uh, and we still had to hire, we still had one more interview, but we felt that we had found our person. And then the fifth person comes in, it's a woman, but um, the, the appearance was far from what anybody would want. And, uh, but then after 10 minutes, we realized the content was there. Okay. So then what, who do we hire? Well, you know, we had number four, we wanted number four. And guess what? We offered the job number four. We did not get number four because we could not afford number four because number four had everything. And when right. you have everything, you can ask for a lot more money, mm -hmm. right? So we tried, but we didn't have the budget. So we ended up hiring number five because the appearance piece we can change that very quickly. Right. But that leadership presence, mm -hmm. that sense of confidence, humble confidence, and uh, and that likability, all of this, you know, like along with strong credentials, it's, it's pretty special. Yeah. What's interesting that I find interesting is that you've developed a system where you can literally teach people how to develop leadership presence. You know, the, a lot of the technical skills, you literally, you need to go get your MBA, you need to, you know, put years of work into it. Uh, and they can have all those, but if they're still lacking the leadership presence, all the knowledge, they're not going to be able to first impart that knowledge effectively. Uh, and they're not going to be able to inspire people to take action. They're not going to be able to communicate well. So this leadership presence, is so important as a balance to all the technical skills. Absolutely, you got it. Can you give us some sense of some of the types of things that someone's gonna learn as part of the leadership presence? So what, what are some of the skills and how do you go about? So some, maybe some tips or some ideas for people, uh, the, the yeah. types of things they'd get as part of the leadership uh, online program. All right, so uh, you know we talk about nailing your first impression. Uh, and, and, you know, there's, uh, there's uh, you know, a big research that was done by Dr. Amy Cuddy and, and uh, some who are listening might be familiar. She, she's a professor at Harvard, wrote this incredible book called Presence. And she talks about, because you know, the, the four elements of first impression are likability, credibility, power, and appearance. So how do I appear powerful when I'm nervous? Well, you know, like this woman who walked in that boardroom for the job interview. And she had done what we call power posing, meaning mm -hmm. that just two minutes before you go into that job interview or that new client you're meeting or uh, a difficult conversation you may have and, and you really want to project confidence, you know, like that's your intention. You set your intention. I want to appear confident. How do I do that? Just by power posting for two minutes before you enter the room will make a drastic difference in the image that you project. Because, you know, David, we, we know with all the motivational speakers that, you know, I, my, our mind can change your body. But Dr. Cuddy's research was, well, we know that. But can the body change the mind? 
And, and that's the reason why also in leadership present, we teach a lot about body language. Mm -hmm. And um, so, and one of the things that uh, we did in our program, we thought, oh, how do we teach body language on an online program? And uh, so we have actors demonstrating the different body language in different scenarios. It's almost like watching a little movie. Right. And uh, for example, you know, if you want to convey uh, it's interesting. Um, there are gestures that are more, uh, if you want to, uh, that are more, um, how could I say, um, impactful than others. Like, so if I want to make a point, I'm going to, you know, like just lower my voice and lower my gestures. Mm -hmm. If I want to be uh, more empathetic, I'll use a round gesture. I welcome you all. Right. You know, uh, or if I really want to frame something and and say this is how we are going to do it, and um, and you want to be engaging, then you frame it and you your your hands stay higher and your voice stays up and And here's how I propose to to build uh, this initiative. So, you know, we can use our gestures to be uh, so much more, to, for our message to be so much more impactful. Um, we, we talked about also um, our reputation, right? Our personal brand. Your personal brand is not the company's brand. That's your brand. Like that belongs to you. It's, it's your promise of value. What am I bringing to the table? And I can share with everyone. There's uh, something else online that we um, we love. There's a, a personality uh, test that I think you can do for free. Uh, it's called How to Fascinate, and you can go to HowToFascinate.com. I have nothing to do with this, uh, but we've used their their personality test. Uh, Atlant and uh, and this will will uh, tell you if you if you do buy then the the you get a big report but it helps you understand what it is about you that fascinates other people and and I just I just uh, love that tool uh, because your personal brand you know like it's got to be like if I go online like if um, if you're a new vendor. Uh, for our company, or you're coming for a job interview, or um, you've written a book, I've never heard about you, and now all of a sudden I, I am invited to, to, to this event, and where you're promoting your book, I'm going to look you up. What sure. am I going to find online? So is your LinkedIn profile as the, the same as your Facebook profile? Do you have Instagram? Like, how do you show up? Do you show up the same or differently from one place to the other? And then when I meet you, will that be congruent as well? So your brand needs to be consistent, it needs to be clear, and it needs to be constant, right? So you, you, you don't let go. You have to look after your brand uh, day in, day out. Um, another thing is um, your network. You know, I always say your network is your net worth. And we need to build those, uh, these communities around us. One of the things that I find very often, somebody says to me like, oh, we, we need this private coaching because there's this job available and, uh, and I think I'm a perfect candidate for it. Okay, great, let, let, let's do it. And uh, okay, who are you champion? Who are you connected with? Who can we reach out to? Who can help you? Well, you know, I've always been a hard worker and I kind of keep to myself, wow. Now we have to do some backpedaling and see right. like, how do I leverage, you know, the network that I have now so that mm -hmm. I can grow with. Uh, so these are things that, you know, like, how can we do that? Well, you need to assess your network and then say, for example, do I have a, a network that I have a, a lot of friends, I have a lot of operational connections, people I work with, but do I have a strategic network? You know, what is a strategic network a strategic network is the these people that will help you think differently you know and then we're going to look at the, the the people that you know and maybe some people that you don't know that maybe somebody else can introduce uh, to you 
Um, and um, presentation skills, oh my goodness. Like that is like a life skill. It's like everybody needs to present at some point. Uh, even if it's, um, you know, like giving a speech at a wedding, you know, or giving one in front of, of, um, of, a, of an important client, or uh, you have to deliver a presentation in front of the senior executive team. You know, it's interesting because one of the things about presentation skills, I always say it's a physical skills, not a mental skills, because there are very many things that you can do in your presentations that um, you will stay so focused on this that you won't be worried anymore about uh, what am I, you know, what am I supposed to say next? And I, I'm going to say something that might shock a lot of people, but a lot of people try and remember their their speech. Well, you know, it's um, that's that crowds our prefrontal cortex, which is what we call our executive brain. So I'm going to give you an example. Um, an analogy, perhaps you go to, you know, if uh, you're on your way home and your partner calls you and say, would you pick up this, 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 and that at the grocery store? And you go, okay, you're driving. You think like, I have to pick this, 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 and that. Right. But if you had pulled over, wrote it down, then you wouldn't be thinking about it. Right. Because you know, you get the grocery store. I have to do it. Right. The list. And it's not like you walk in the grocery store with your face tucked to your list. It's there for when you forget. Uh -huh. So the notes that we take when we, you know, that, that, we, that we take, that we write down when we do a presentation, we bring them with us. They're in big font so that we can find ourselves if we leave, if we forgot something and just look down, take the moment, pause, look down. Oh, yes, this is what I need to say. Then come back up, look at your audience and say the words. Don't look down and start reading because now you're giving your audience permission to leave. You don't want to do that. So you just want to look down, look at the words, look up, reconnect with everybody and see what you have to say. <clears throat> now people think that it takes a long time to do this and I'm going to lose my audience. On the contrary, because we know you're being thoughtful. <clears throat> you brought your notes. And now you're back with us because we know that silence actually creates anticipation. And if you ever listen to um, Obama speak, uh, he's a very slow speaker. He's not a slow speaker. You never, you never slow down the rate of your words. You only slow down the rate of your speed. Like the, the, uh, the I'm sorry, the rate of your speech. So I can have some pause and then continue. So, uh, so these are some of the, um, you know, elements. And of course, you know, with everything that's going on in the world right now, as a leader, you have to be uh, very inclusive. So diversity and inclusion is also a topic mm -hmm. that we cover. How can I build more inclusive team? And diversity is really counting the number and being inclusive is making the number count. One of the things that's really striking me as you're speaking is these skills are critical for a wide variety of things. So if you're at a company and you're looking to advance or you're looking to be more effective where you are, these are important skills. If you're looking for a new job within your company, these are important skills. If you're looking for a new job outside your company or you're currently looking for a position, these are all skills that are required that you're, you're putting under the brand and it makes sense of leadership presence. I wanna just take a minute and remind folks uh, where you can get access to the program again. So jot this down. I gave it out earlier. I wanna give it out one more time. So uh, Diane and her company have created a very comprehensive program, uh, online program for developing leadership presence. It's at elearning.corporateclassinc.com forward slash offer. So just jot that down, elearning.corporateclassinc.com forward slash offer. And I, I want to spend a couple minutes, just a few more questions on the, the program itself. Now, the tips that people are going to learn and some of the things that you're talking about right now 
are these things people going to be able to apply immediately right after training or does it take months or years to incorporate how quickly can people start to, to actually change and incorporate these things well you know this is something for me that's always been very important that's why i say it's a leadership presence system because of our experience over, you know, over the years, which is like almost 35 years now of working with leaders globally at across all industry and at all levels is that, you know, we, we need to be very pragmatic in our teaching and, um, and for us, like the, the, the tips that you, that you learn, you can apply immediately and i'll give you an example of that we were at a large company it was an insurance company and we were helping people with their presentation skills and there was somebody from hr in the room and uh, that person came and said i have to leave for about 40 minutes but i'll be back mm -hmm. and when that person came back and people were presenting she said what did they eat their presentation skills are so different i was gone like just 40 minutes yeah and it's because you know it's it's tested we know what we're doing and and these are are things that people can leave the, the you know the next day after their training and start mm -hmm. applying immediately uh whether it's on your personal brand your body language uh your, your presentation skills dealing with office politics or uh, understanding you know what to do with your leadership uh, style, um, what to do with, how to build a more inclusive team, um, how to set goals, all mm -hmm. of those things, like, you know, it, it's just, um, there are things that, oh my gosh, yes, I can do, I can start doing it now. I don't have to read 20 books and think about it. Um, no, these are, it's very, very practical. And, and that's what's on our online program as well. We have tons of quiz, we have like um, we have quizzes, we have videos, we have um, uh, tons of resources for those who want to read deeper into things. Uh, and as I mentioned, the possibility of uh, maybe getting one hour of private coaching if they if they want. So yes, absolutely, very practical. Thank you for asking. How long does it take to go through the whole program? So if you were to sit there and do nothing else, it would take you eight hours but you don't want to do that because you want to give yourself the time to reflect and think about it. So I would say, you know, do an hour at a time mm -hmm. and look at the resources, do the quiz, watch the videos we suggest for you to watch. We have included many short videos of our own, but there are others that we recommend. Mm -hmm. um, explore a little bit you know like we we took some excerpts of some books that you know we think reinforces the learning so take your time um it's self-paced it's for you to do it at your leisure and um but if you think you're going to a job interview next week and you want to get it all done now well just you know <laughs> shut the blinds down okay. close the door and just go for it all right. And what's the investment? I, I know we're giving, you're providing a, a free trial as well. What's the investment for the program? Well, the investment, the program, this is interesting because our two day program um, is uh, the average price is about $3,500. And that's what I said. It makes it the, you know, somewhat prohibitive. So uh, this program is $597 and you get all the material, you get all of the, uh, the, tips and mm -hmm. the exercises that you would get live so it's a um, pretty spectacular deal we're very very proud of it so it's a good investment well the way i look at it is these are skills that can make a significant impact on your career and a significant impact not only growth of your career but how effective you are within whatever position you're in right now and these are these are all critical skills and if you don't have them, you need them. But that's the way Absolutely. I see it. And, and you know, even if you have some of them, you probably don't have them all. Right. And, and, that's, and that's the thing that I think is so beautiful about it is that, you know, you may spend more time on a module than you will on another one. And, and I see it, you know, at very senior level, we have people who are, you know, vice presidents or 
um, you know, and do have their MBA and their PhD and, mm -hmm. you know, a senior engineer. And they say, I wish I'd been taught this so, so many years ago. And now I'm, I'm, I'm just like a, you know, a big aha moment right. for these people. Well, Diane, we covered a lot of material today and you gave a, a lot of solid practical tips. Make sure to check out her, her program online. Before we wrap up, any final thoughts for people before we finish up today? Well, yes, I like to say that leadership presence is a journey. It's, a, it's, a, it's not an event. It's a journey of continuous exploration of, and self-discovery along your path to leadership so that would be my final thought i like it i like the concept oh diane thanks for sharing thanks for joining us today good material thank you and you're welcome and i'd like to thank everybody for listening and i want to wish everybody great success in all areas of your life stay safe talk to everybody soon